Hey guys, it's Tim here at JK Boots and we just wanted to do a video that would cover all the custom options and answer all of your questions because we know it can kind of get confusing. So let's just start from the first thing, we'll just go right away. So let's start from color. So the three main colors that we're carrying right now are um, black, brown, and mocha, obviously. Um, and people ask us all the time, is there differences in quality? No, they're exactly the same and the, literally the only difference is the color. So the black obviously is classic black, it looks good and both smooth and rough out. Now the brown sometimes as, as we've just been building boots for so many years, you know, when you get leather from the, from the tannery, you know, the color is not always consistently consistent because it's a cow hide. So sometimes it'll be a little darker, sometimes it'll be a little lighter, but more than often it's in that dark brown, we call it chocolate brown range. Same thing, both smooth and rough out looks really, really good. And then the third one is gonna be mocha. So mocha is always pretty consistent in this, like I describe it as a peanut butter or like coffee tannish color. When you do a full rough out mocha, it looks really light. When you do a smooth, you know, smooth upper and rough out lower or smooth all the way around, it looks a little bit darker. So the mocha is the lightest of the three, the chocolate brown's right there in the center, and then obviously black is just totally dark. Um, and then also there's an option there called multicolor. And what you do is when you select it, you can go down to the notes section and just type in, hey, you know, I want a brown lower and a black upper, or I want a mocha upper and a black lower. And so that'll help us figure out exactly what you're after. And a lot of people do multicolor boots. They turn out really cool. They turn out really good. Same quality, same thickness, same hide, just literally a different color. So when you move on down, then there's gonna be boot height. So people ask me all the time, what's the most common? By far, 10 inch tops are the most common and we recommend it by far as well, just cause it's the perfect balance. Um, it's a good protection, it's good support, it's right up there in your calf. Sometimes, most of the time, it's right below the calf muscle, so it's really comfortable. Um, the second most common would be an eight inch top or like a 12 inch top. Pretty rarely do we see 14s and 16s, although we do them, especially for a lot of wild and firefighter guys. Like I think it's um, Lone Peak Hotshot Crew, I think we've done most of their boots and they are classic well known for wearing the tall 16 inches so we definitely do this I've even done 18 and 20 but definitely 10 is the most common it's usually right below the calf muscle so it's pretty comfortable an 8 inch top is still good ankle support uh, but it's just a little bit lower so you know it's up to you personal preference and then rarely do we see 6 inch I've almost never seen 4s just because there's no need for that uh, but 6 inch would definitely be the shortest that we would commonly go but obviously we can go down to 4 if you need it but I would definitely recommend 10 uh, and then there's the leather side so there's smooth rough out and full rough out so um, to answer this question, um, I would definitely say that the most common thing that we've seen is a rough out lower and a smooth upper, and we just call that rough out. Um, so with a rough out lower and a smooth upper, literally all that means is that the lower portion, so the toe and the counter portion are rough out. So that means that we just flip the hide inside out and it's the rough out suede on the lowers, and then the upper, the part that wraps around your calf is smooth out. This is the most common, 90% of the boots are this way, the reason being because it looks good and also you don't necessarily need full rough out up the whole boot just because nine times out of ten people's pants are covering the top of the boot and so the only exposed portion is that rough out portion and yes rough out is better every time it is better it's more abrasion resistant it's not as sensitive smooth is much more sensitive it's much more fragile to scuffing and scratching and all of this stuff and actually, I do believe that rough out is easier to clean because if it gets muddy and dirty, all you gotta do is get a really hard bristle brush and you just start brushing it out and all that mud and dirt and just nasty stuff comes right out. Smooth can sometimes be a little bit more challenging. You have to wipe it down, all that stuff. With rough out, you're a little bit more forgiving. You can just brush it and brush it and it pops right out. The full rough out, we don't see as much and it's actually a little bit more challenging to work with. So that's why there's a bit of a price difference there. Uh, but it's definitely nothing wrong with it. Um, if you want to go for it, just have the toughest, craziest, most strongest, most powerful, you know, whatever, go for a full rough out. Nothing wrong with that at all. The next option is going to be the hardware. So with hardware, we really carry just a few of the main ones. That's obviously classic brass, black, nickel, antique brass, and also we have brown available. People ask me all the time as well, is one stronger than the other? Not really. Um, I've, they're pretty much all the same, it's just a matter of color and they're coated. I've only ever seen really antique brass be the toughest one, so if I had to recommend one that's the strongest, I would say antique brass. And the reason that I say it is because I see the way that they are punched in with our machines, and I just see how the antique brass, the, the, the machine has to work a little bit harder to get it in there. So it looks and it feels a little bit tougher, a little bit stronger, and when I see the boots come back, typically antique brass isn't worn through as much, but all the other ones are pretty much the same. Just because it's a color difference, there's not really much of a difference of strength there. If you had to choose one that you wanted to be the toughest, I would say antique brass. Sometimes I call it gun metal as well, just because it kind of looks like that color. The next thing 
is souls. So with souls, we kind of have a lot of options and I'll just break it down for you pretty quickly. Um, so the main one that you kind of see in all of our photos is that lug soul. It's the one with the deep tread. So lug souls come in three variants. The, actually four, excuse me. The first one is the classic 100 lug Vibram soul. It's the one that's just that black Vibram soul. It doesn't have any red or white X's on it. That's the classic 100 lug soul they call it. It's been used for years, tried, true, and classic. It's a great soul all purpose. The second one is the honey soul. So the honey soul is that light tan colored one. Great soul as well. A little bit softer, a little bit grippier, and kind of nice if you're on a concrete floor, you're standing on the floor all day, concrete, shop, mechanic, whatever, welder, fabricator, great soul. The third one is that white X soul. It's called the fire and ice. It's black in color and has a white X on the bottom. This one is called fire and ice because it's fire rated. So it's good for heat and won't melt. And the second thing is that it's also rated for ice. So it's grippy on slippery slopes and slippery areas. So at least that's what Vibram claims. And also what I've really seen about it is it's incredibly soft. It's the softest of all four by far, just cause it's so, you know, it just absorbs all that and it's really grippy. So it does really, really well on just wet conditions, but it kind of wears a little bit quicker. And then the fourth one obviously is that classic black sole with a red X on the bottom. We call it a red X Vibram. It's 100% fire rated. Uh, it's not gonna melt. It will, it will do really well in the heat. It'll do really well with sparks and all that stuff. And all fire guys typically get this sole. I've also seen a lot of fire guys get the fire and ice one and some fire guys get the honey one. So, you know, according to the NFPA, well, I should say the Forest Service NFPA standards, all they require is a Vibram sole. So actually you can kind of get away with that honey if you want to. I mean, a lot of Forest Service guys get the honey sole and they don't really have a problem with it, at least, you know, not that I've heard of. And so that's kind of the, the differences there. When we move on from the 100 lug soles, we start getting into kind of those Western soles. So their first one that we call is the 430 or the mini Vibram. It's the one that looks like it has the tread on there, but it's actually a little bit shallower. Great sole for farmers, ranchers, doesn't track mud and dirt, pretty low profile. It's actually oil resistant as well. Really, really good sole. I really like it uh, just because it's not going to be this dirty, muddy, thick, heavy, crazy sole, but it lasts pretty long and it's pretty nice as well. Then we get into one called the V-Bar. It's not used as much. We definitely use it for our Western Packers though, and it's typically by request. Also, it's sometimes called the 700 sole. It's the official number for it, but same thing, really good sole. It actually has zero tread on it. It literally has a V mark on the bottom and it's pretty good for slippery surfaces, but the design or idea behind it was for a farmer or a rancher or someone who might spend a lot of time in the saddle and it's easy to slide in and out with the stirrups. So that's kind of the, the differences there. When we move on past those Western soles, we come into, we call it the white Christy or black Christy or the classic wedge sole. And they just really come in black or white colors. Really good sole. I really like it. Actually, all of my boots, almost all of my boots have that sole on there. Super comfortable and really nice for just hard concrete surfaces, walking around all day. I personally walk around the shop all day. I love it. I've actually hiked, I think, two mountains in my boots that have the wedge sole on and they held up really, really well. So I was really surprised by that. I've only ever seen one guy wear them down in like nine months and that was just because he was just on gravel and it was just crazy. So if you're in a, a finished carpenter, mechanic, uh, indoors, stuff like that, wedge sole is great. If you're outside gravel, harder surfaces, definitely not a good thing. It'll wear out super fast and it'll be pretty slick as well. So that's pretty much covers most of those kind of main sole options. Um, you know, there, we'll, we'll put some links in the description below or you can just go to vibram.com uh, and they kind of go a little bit more in depth, but those are really the, the main soles that we offer. So it's those four versions of 100 lug sole. It's the two versions of the Western sole and then the two different colors for the wedge sole. And they pretty much cover you know, almost 99% of, of any kind of terrain or area that you'll be out there, you know, fighting fire, logging, mechanicking, finish carpenter, whatever. So that's pretty much it for the soles. Then we'll move on uh, to another option for stitching. So there's two options there, regular and then Technora. So the regular um, is just regular, good thread, nothing wrong with it, classic thread. The second option is the Technora stitching. 95% uh, of, of our boots go out with Technor stitching and actually all of our stock that we have in store is Technor stitching as well for two reasons. It's way tougher than the regular stuff. I personally work with it a lot and I've seen how it dulls my knives as we're cutting stuff up for rebuilds and resoles. And the second reason is because it's actually Kevlar bonded. So it's like, you know, there's literally three strands that are kind of bonded together to make up this strand. It's just so tough. It doesn't melt and it doesn't burn if you're welding. And so we always recommend it for anybody around heat, around sparks, welding, uh, every firefighter, anybody who just wants a tougher version of stitching, the Technora is the way to go. It is worth the 20 bucks. Trust me on that one. Then we move on to the pattern. So 
uh, there's two main patterns or you know styles that we call them. So the first one is the traditional, and it's the recommended one. That's the classic one that you see, the blucher design. The second one is called lace to toe. So I get a lot of questions on the difference between lace to toe and traditional pattern or regular pattern that we would call it, or plain toe sometimes people call it. And I'll just sum it down to just these two differences. Plain toe is the traditional tried and true and awesome version of the boot. It's very classic, it's old school, and it works all the time. The second version, lace to toe, the idea behind it was to have one more eyelet going forward towards your toes to offer more adjustability in how tight or loose you could lace your boots. Sometimes people will buy lace to toe in order to make up for the lack of a good fitting boot. That's redundant. That doesn't make sense to me. It would be better that you get a right fitting boot in plain toe instead of trying to get lace to toe to make up for the lack of a good fit. So that's why we always like to push people to traditional, uh, traditional plain toe just because I like it more. It's tried, it's true, it's classic. It works really, really well. And sometimes with lace to toe, because of the way that it's put together, right there on the top of those toes, like the big toe, the second toe, and the third toe, there's actually a seam that connects these two, two layers there. And sometimes I've seen maybe maybe 10% of the time, 50% of the time, that seam can actually kind of come down and start to rub the tops of your toes. So that's the reason that I don't like lace to toe. It actually costs more as well because it's more leather involved and it's a little bit more challenging to make. I know that some companies have actually gone away from doing lace to toe. We still do it just because I know there's people that really care about it and really want it. So if you want it, you can request it and you can, you can choose it. But I would suggest to go with the plain toe. It's just better. Then we'll move on to the shanks. So, um, Really, you only need a lineman shank. We call it a lineman shank if you're only really doing two things. The first thing is if you're a climber, so a lineman, or you're a tree climber, the se uh, or, or if you're um, you know, up and down ladders all day, that's a big one. Or the second thing is, and believe it or not, if you're working with a shovel all day and you're just shoveling and shoveling and shoveling, get the lineman shank. It offers that support right there under the arch. And also what we do sometimes is we kick that heel back a little bit for the climbers to make room for the stirrups and the gaffs and stuff. So definitely if you're climbing, if you're an arborist, you're a lineman, maybe you're, you know, like I said, working with a shovel all day, the lineman shank is for you. It's a thick, another 11 iron piece of leather going right there in those layers. Uh, just make, thickening up and stiffening up and, and supporting that area right there under the arch where you would be climbing. If you're not doing those things, you do not need the lineman shank. It's dead weight and it's extra for no reason unless you're doing the things that I mentioned. Next, we go to heel height. This is also a really common question that we get. So with heel height, uh, our classic or standard heel height, we call it four lifts. It's not four inches. Each lift is not an inch. Each lift is actually about a quarter to three sixteenths of an inch. And our classic standard heel height, we call it four lifts because there's literally four lifts or stacks in the heel. This heel height we found to just be the best. Um, time and time again, people love that heel height. It's really comfortable. It's not obnoxiously high and it's not too low. And so it's just really good, a nice middle. We used to do it differently back in the day, but just from people talking to us and asking customers what they thought was best, we figured that the standard four would just be the best for the classic one. Already, if you wanna kinda go drop the heel height, um, we do what's called minus one, minus two, minus three. So literally, that means literally minus one, minus two, minus three. So if you wanted, let's say, a total of one lifts, you would go minus three. If you wanted a total of two lifts, you would go minus two. Sometimes people ask me, well, how much should I drop it? Um, a good kind of gauge maybe to gauge yourself would be this way. A lot of times I'll say, if you've never had custom boots before and you're kind of a little bit weary of having a taller heel on there, totally fine. Go with a minus two for a total of two lifts, and it's a soft transition from maybe having flat heeled boots or flat soled boots all your life to having a heel on there. It's a soft transition, it's not gonna be obnoxiously tall, and it'll still feel pretty good. So that's a good way to get started, and then you can kinda see how you like it. And when time goes by, maybe you need a resole, we can go back to a standard one, with, which is four, so that's no problem at all. If you really wanna do the lowest heel that we have available, it would be a total of minus three, so for a total of one lift. That's our classic low heel, works really well, and we've actually been doing a lot more of those lately. So that's kind of the thing there when it goes to heel heights, works pretty well, um, and the system that we do it, instead of doing a unisole, is actually a lot better. It makes it easier to resole, and the boots last longer. Also then, we get into hard toes. So we've got, a bunch of different hard toes. Um, we've got, let me see here, we've got composite, we've got steel, we've got celastic, we've got fiberglass, and then we've also got a toe cap. So we've got five versions of a hard toe. Now, I'll just be totally blunt. To be honest, all of them suck except for composite. I always push people away from hard toes. I don't like them. I, I think if you can stay away from a hard toe, stay away from it. It's, it's just, it makes it hard. It makes it harder, you know, it's harder to wrap the boot around it, all this stuff. However, if you absolutely need one, composite's the way to go. 
uh, because it's a bigger toe box. It doesn't get cold. If something does come and fall down on you, composite toe will just crack and take the blow. You know, steel toe sometimes can actually fall in and cut your toes. I've seen that before. I don't like steel toe because it gets cold. It's a small, narrow toe box. It's uncomfortable. Um, when you get into other, other things like Celastic, Celastic is a lot lighter and it's not as strong as composite and steel. I would only recommend Celastic if you're wanting to like maybe keep the shape of the toe box or if you're you know, literally doing really light work. And just for the sake of having something on there, get a Celastic toe. You know, it's fine. It's a carton hard material that we actually soak in acetone and then we wrap over the mold of the boot and then it gets hard. And so it's like a, a good comparison would be like, you know, like a thin fiberglass would be something like Celastic. Then you get into a toe cap, which is just a simple, another eight ounce piece of leather running over the top of the toe. It's good, it does something. It's better than nothing if you want some form of toe protection, but you know, at the same time, it's not gonna stop a hammer. Um, the final option is fiberglass. And fiberglass we only do typically by request or recommendation from us, the boot makers. The reason being is because if you, let's say, wanted a composite toe, but your foot is so wide or, or, or so abnormally shaped that a standard composite toe won't fit, then we have to do a fiberglass toe. And what we do is we build the mold of the foot and then we pour the epoxy and resin all over that area. And so it takes that mold and shape and it does pretty, pretty, uh, it does pretty well. You know, it won't bother your pinky toe because we've built the last already and then it just sits over the top of that. So it's a little bit more expensive because we mix the epoxy and resin. And the downside with that is that it's not ASTM rated because we make it here in house. But the truth be told, it's actually probably stronger or just as strong than composite toe. So there's no worries there with like, you know, it crashing or falling on you, but it doesn't have an ASTM ticket on there because we make it here in house. And it's only really by request or necessity that you would get the fiberglass toe. Last thing I'll mention is with composite toe, there is kind of one con. It looks pretty bulky. It's kind of thick, it kind of looks a little funny, especially if you got a big foot. So it's kind of the downside. Sometimes people will opt for the fiberglass toe just because it looks a lot better instead of the composite toe because they don't want to steal and it won't fit well. So those are kind of the takeaways. You know, make a decision at your own discretion. If you can, stay away from hard toes in general. So the next section is the previous boot section. That section is really, really important. Please fill that out with any kind of boots that you had before, whether it's not even handmade boots, whether it's just, you know, something that you bought, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's really important for you to know what you've worn in the past just so we can properly kind of figure out, you know, just as a frame of reference, okay, you know, this worked for you or this didn't. If you've had handmade boots already before, it's very important that you let us know what that is because then we can kind of figure out, okay, hey, this particular size was good or this length or this width uh, and so forth. So that really helps us get just your sizing down a lot better and just does a lot more work for us. So it's really good that you fill out that portion um, of what you've had previously. The, um, the next two sections are the size length and size width, same thing. You know, maybe you've had like a certain boot before and you had it in you know, 10E or 9D, just make sure that you fill that out. Um, so there's two sections that then go, the next two are the uh, body height and then the body weight. Uh, again, really important, just helps us kind of build a frame of reference of what you're gonna need. Um, you know, there are certain height and weight ratios that we like to use to better size people, so make sure that you fill those out for sure. Then we're gonna go down to the additional logo section. So uh, we offer custom logos, so if you had a particular logo that you wanted to be embossed onto your boots, you can actually uh, purchase the custom logo option, and then simply all you need to do is just fill out, you know, like a PDF, so for example, if it's you know, let's just say we had once had like somebody send us like a, a pretty cool like a lightning bolt thing and they just simply sent us the PDF of that lightning bolt in a PDF format in an email. We had it made up and then we actually stamped the boots with that. Um, so it's pretty cool, you know, and it can literally be anything that you can properly give us in a PDF format. We'll get it made and we can stamp your boots with it. We also do a lot of um, crew logos, hotshot logos, agencies you know, all kinds of different, you know, unions and all that kind of stuff. And um, the first time to get that logo done is $50. But then after that, to reuse it, to emboss it, I think is that 35 option. So for example, if you know that, you know, let's just take a Lone Peak Hotshot Crew for an example, that we have their crew logo because we've done it before. And guys will then ask us to do it again. And then that's that $35 option if you know for a fact that we already have your crew logo, you know, ready to go. So that's what that is. The next option is the knife sheath option. So if you wanted to get a knife sheath, um, done on your boots if you wanted to get you know on the inside outside leg you know whatever specify that and then I'm gonna need a PDF scan of your knife sheath and as many options and details as you can possibly give us the length the width the depth of the blade and all that stuff and so that's really important there's a price on there that you can select right away and that'll help us to just figure out exactly what you need and then I'm definitely gonna need the scan and a photo and some measurements of that sheath then we have a, a next option which is for the matching belt um, so if you want to get a belt literally made from the same hide as your boots 
All you got to do is just select that and then we'll literally take the same hide that we used to cut your boots out and we'll cut the belt out as well and you get a matching belt. And you can actually specify in this option the length um, of the belt and then the kind of buckle. So we have antique brass and then we have nickel buckles and those are just two of the best ones. They look the best and they last a long time too. Also those buckles are replaceable. So if you've got a crew buckle or whatever, any other kind of buckle you want to use, um, you can actually replace that buckle with that one and then you can wear the belt. The last um, option box is, is the laces option. So we offer leather and nylon laces and some people just really don't like leather laces and they like nylons instead so we can definitely do that for you. The final box is a notes box. Um, that's just good extra information. Anything you think we should know, any additional info, something about you, about your feet that you've noticed, fill it in. It's awesome. The more information, the better. Helps us get a better idea of what you need, what we're working with and what you're after. So definitely fill that in. And I think that covers everything. So we just went through all those options on the custom build option tab, on the build a boot tab. And so if you guys have any questions, obviously you can always text us, DM us, uh, email us, but that should cover just about everything. Anything unusual or out of the ordinary, something that you might be worried about, obviously you can always put it in the notes section or you can just email us separately. We're pretty good with um, communicating with customers one-on-one -on -one to, to figure out what they're after and what they'd like. So that should cover everything. Thanks for watching and check out our other videos.